And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. So they took off. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto him. And he said to him, And he said to him, Here, here am I. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Rough people back then, right? This, is, this sort of thing is happening quite frequently. Um, and they said to one another, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what becomes of his dreams. So there's an echo of the Cain and Abel story there, obviously, you know, I mean, it's not quite as clear, because in the Cain and Abel story, Abel is clearly just doing well. And here, you can't quite get a handle on Joseph's character. You can't tell if he is actually the elect, or if he's just a spoiled brat with delusions of grandeur. You know, and, but it doesn't matter, because his brothers are so irritated at his, the fact that he's favored, and perhaps even the fact that he might be someone destined for, for something special that they find it perfectly reasonable to destroy that. And it's so, odd, it's so interesting how often that motif of pulling down an ideal manifests itself in these old stories, right? It's, it's, the pattern is established in the Cain and Abel story, it just repeats and repeats and repeats. And I, I think that's dead true, I think it just repeats all the time. So that people are annoyed about how tragic their lives are. They're annoyed that they're subject to malevolence. And they're annoyed that they're not doing as well as other people are doing. And that makes them, that puts them exactly into this state of mind. Now maybe, with modern people, if you're going to kill someone because you're resentful as a modern person, you don't generally slay them and throw them into a pit. You know, what you do is you just kill them slowly over a few decades. And it isn't obvious to me that that's any better. So, I've seen plenty of married couples who are in that situation. It's like... It's like, heh, well, there was this Mitch Hedberg, he used to complain about turtlenecks. He said it was like being strangled by a really weak midget. And <laughs> it's probably a really politically incorrect joke, but it's a funny joke. So, uh, and then you see, you see relationships that are like that. It's like each person has their hands around the neck of the other person, but they don't have enough courage to actually to squeeze. They just put enough pressure on to s cut the circulation off a tiny bit. <laughs> so the person just gets like, they die over a 30 year period, something like that. So, yeah, and you all laugh because you know it's true, that's why. 